Okay, so as far as Ishmael and Isaac, let's go back to Romans 9, verse 6. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. And then he explains what that means in the next couple of verses. Neither, because they are the, of the seed of Abraham, are they all children. So there he says it right there. Just because they're born descendants of Abraham. And by the way, Schofield changed the promise from uh, seed to descendants in his notes under Genesis 12. But neither because are they of the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Aha, see, it's Isaac, not Ishmael. But let's keep going. That is, they which are children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Well, guess what? Both Isaac and Ishmael are fleshly children. <clears throat> but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The promise, as you alluded to, is spiritual. And I'm not making that up because the same man, Paul, also wrote Galatians chapter 4. And in Galatians chapter 4, he talks about the same two boys, Ishmael and Isaac. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 24, which things are an allegory. There's nothing wrong with using the word allegory. It's in the King James Bible. And here's what it's talking about. Which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth, or compares, or equals, to Jerusalem, which now is present-day Jerusalem, and is in bondage with her children, unsaved. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, the new Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem. We read about it in Revelation 20 and 21, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. He's talking to Galatian believers here. We are, as Isaac was, the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted, that would be Ishmael, persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. In other words, the fleshly sons the Jews, persecute those that are born after the Spirit. If you read the book of Acts, you know who did most of the persecution, persecuting of the Christians? It was the Jews, the unsaved Jews. <clears throat> was born after the Spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Paul's saying we are not children through the physical way of getting there. That's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. You must be born again. He was a ruler of the Jews, a Pharisee. This man, Paul, was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, Hebrew of the Hebrews. And yet, he's saying that's not how we get there. We must be born again. It has to be by promise, not by physical seed. It's not by race. It's by grace. And so there's the allegory that Paul's teaching in Romans 9 and in Galatians 4. He, he didn't change his mind when he wrote Romans 9. It's the same allegory. And there's nothing wrong with using an allegory when it's, when it's biblical. And so Ishmael and Isaac represent unsaved and saved. Ishmael represents children of the flesh who are proud of being firstborn, who are proud of being first, who are proud of being able to prove their lineage back to Abraham. And yet, they represent the unsaved. They, they represent the lost and the children that are not of promise. Isaac represents the miracle birth, the, the untimely birth, the un, unimaginable birth, and yet the spiritual birth, the born again, uh, adoption into God's family. And that is, that is the allegory that's being taught here. And one gender of bondage, uh, one is from Mount Sinai, which is Hagar. Uh, the other, uh, represented by Sarah, is the new Jerusalem from above. Revelation talks about the new Jerusalem, the heavenly city. This all fits together very well. And so uh, I have no problem, uh, as you might say, spiritualizing it when I see Paul doing that. And you go to Galatians chapter 3 where uh, you, you said I misinterpreted it. No, no, Galatians chapter 3 says exactly what it says. And by the way, Galatians chapter 3 is right before Galatians chapter 4. And uh, I just talked about chapter 4, but Galatians 3, it's just saying, uh, they that are in Christ, the same are the children of Abraham. They that are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And so we get into the same family as anyone that was saved in the Old Testament. We get into the same family through the same way, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he, he, is, he, is, uh, he is accessed by faith. We are, we are counted as seed and we are 
heirs according to the promise because of it. And it says in Galatians 3, not seeds, plural, but seed singular. And that seed is Christ. And as I go back, I said earlier, in Christ, they that are in Christ, the same are the children of Abraham.